welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we'll be looking at fluids and the how to basically make them. So uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need. You're going to need the flowing texture and the still texture from the base game. If you want to design your own, you can always do that as well, but it should be possibly animated, which um, it's just easier to use a template, something like this. But uh, you can learn how to make a template. I'll probably come out with a template tutorial in the future. Um, there are a few different ways of making liquids and stuff, so um, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can put something together for that. Um, but basically what you're going to need is you're going to need those two textures. There's an overlay texture, but that's not used in the application itself. And then there is the, um, the uh, flowing one, which is basically uh, if we look at the size of the image, it's it actually doubled. So I think they did this in order to see if the texture is um, connected to each other, like if it's uh, for seamlessness, but you only really need half of it. So it's probably better if you copy just half and then make a new image and then put it in. Uh, for this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is using a very similar texture, but I'm going to leave it so it's basically darker, and then we'll be calling it oil. So it'll just be kind of like a new type of liquid that we can use. All right, so once we've done that, we can import, or should I say set up the animated textures. We can go here, and then we can import as animated strip, and then we can select our image files. So you want to navigate to the location for where those files are located. In our case, it's the desktop for my computer, and then we can select the flowing one. And then there will be the other one, which we'll need to set up as well. So this one has a tick delay of two, uh, or I think it was, I think it was one actually. So uh, you want a tick delay of one for the flowing, and it should look something like that. If we look at two, it's a little bit choppier. So uh, most likely it's at one tick for the base game. And once you have that, uh, what you can do is click on the green button and go block and then give it a name. So in my case, I'm going to call it oil flowing or flow or whatever. And then this will allow me to select the texture size, which we'll be leaving at 16. And then what we want to do is obviously click any cube in the frame and then go control A. And then you want to do the delete uh, feature to get ready for the next frame. So once you've done that, you can select your uh, still one. And this one should be set at a tick rate of two uh, from what I remember. So we can play it and you can kind of see this is what the vanilla texture would look like when it's animated. So setting it to two and then repeating the same process over again. So you would want to do your blocks and then the oil, the name. And once you have these two textures, uh, you're just about ready to go. Uh, we will need a bucket texture um, later on. Once you've gone ahead and made your textures though, you can start working on the fluid. So you want to select the type of fluid, give it a registry name, and then you can move on to setting up the properties. So the first two things that you need to actually do is add the textures for these. You have the flowing texture and the still texture. This is the display name for the uh, block itself. So anything that you put in there will be basically what it comes up as. And then you have the different types of properties. These basically, um, some properties of water or lava get inherited from these this setting here. And then you have um, the uh, flow rate. This basically is uh, how fast the water uh, moves. So uh, for example, five for water, uh, default is 5 for water, uh, 30 for lava in the overworld. So you can kind of see that higher numbers would be uh, shorter distances compared to what the um, regular one. This, uh, the flow strength, has to do with how um, much force the liquid has to push the entity. And then we have levels decrease per block. So again, this is um, for the decreasing, it will give you some help on that. 
and then there was the level decrease per block so basically this has to do with the um the angle of where how it basically decreases over time so for example um the value of one for water in the water and lava in the nether uh two for lava in the overworld so i think this has to do with the actual level that it decreases short like short period uh in most cases if you're working with like a liquid or whatever in the overworld most likely you would only need um to set this to one uh slope flow distance uh this is determines the slope um affected by spreading so basically the spreading angle so when it spreads it's going to do like a kind of a radius round so this will uh, determine the radius of the distance of it um, of the slope multiplier most of these settings can be probably left as alone uh, so can source multiply this basically allows you to enable or disable like allow it to create its itself so if you want to basically allow you to create more source blocks and you can do that with the can source multiply the drip uh, particles will be enabled so if you want to enable the drip particles and you can set the drip particles those will happen underneath the block that it's on so uh, the tint tint x is basically for something like water if you have um, something that you want to import uh, there's no way to actually add custom indexes but you can uh, select the built-in ones and then the additional conditions those should return true if you want to enable a bucket You can go ahead and do that. You will need to give the bucket a GUI name. If not, then You can disable the bucket altogether as well uh, For the texture you should be an item texture uh, for the bucket and for that you need to go to the assets Minecraft textures and then scroll down to items and then you will need to kind of scroll down all the way down to either lava or um, water and there will be a bucket template that you can use here uh, I am I basically made one up already so we can go ahead and import that um, but we can also import it from our textures tab and go to the item where there's the diamond and then we can select the textures one right here so that will be our texture and then we can import the texture for the oil there once you've done that you can select what creative inventory that bucket should go under so uh, depending on what tab you want there's different properties like for different tabs uh, i think it's under tools if i remember correctly so the tool one tools and utilities if I think I got it wrong for the ingredients. So uh, once you've done that, you can select your bucket fill sound. Uh, if you type um, bucket, uh, it might come up, maybe not. Uh, bucket, yeah, there you go. Uh, you have some filled sounds and uh, regular ones. So empty ones, uh, the default water one is for empty and then there's lava empty and a few other ones that you can choose from here. So those are, we'll just go with the default empty one. And then the rarity that d determines the color of the name of the item. So common is white, uncommon yellow, aqua for rare, and then light purple for epic. So, and then you can give the item some special information. This was basically just lore text that goes underneath the name of the item. And then you have the properties of the fluid block properties. And there's some modded fluid block properties some of the modded stuff I don't really know what it does but uh, resistance uh, generally liquid has a really high resistance I think it's like infinite amount um, but if you want it something like similar to water where it will not be able to uh, take any damage from an explosion you might want to set it to like a million or something like that uh, luminescence it this is uh, basically if it is uh, shows light uh, like lava 15 for lava uh, light op opacity is basically how much um, light goes through it in this case oil is pretty dense so you wouldn't see through any light through it so we'd want to set it to 15 uh, zero for uh, letting all light through tick rate if you're having a tick rate then you want to make sure that that's enabled any number above one uh, block flammability will allow you to basically set if the block is flammable or not 
Fire spreading allows you to basically um, let the block uh, catch on fire, and if it does, then it will basically be destroyed. And then the color on map is basically the color that will show up on the map. Uh, enable a method of rendering the glow. That's basically if it holds the glowing or not. Then you have the modded settings, which are a little bit different. Uh, these I'm not too sure, but I think they have to do with specific properties that are for mod like forge. Um, I really don't know too much about these and it just, you have to play around with them or keep them the same. Uh, this has to do with temperature of the block. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the actual thing. And then you have your triggers. So if you're using update tick, then you want to go ahead and make sure that the update tick uh, is set to one or something like that. And then you have a few different other options. For example, if you want the player to collide, you might want to give the player a, or the mob a um, effect. If they collide with it, that would be an option or you can have an update tick and spawn particles. Actually, I think particles need to be on a uh, client side um, Thing, if I remember correctly yeah client side display random tick so you'd need it on that that one instead I think you still need a update timer for that or a tick rate for this particular block so if you're going to go with that then you're going to need um, something that you can actually set up I'm just gonna quickly build something that will test this theory so we'll go ahead and just throw down a uh, we'll place spawn okay we can't use that one that server side so spawn single particle and then we're gonna have to offset some of these uh, positions a little bit so we're going to go ahead and repeat this so we have a little bit more of particles shown and then we'll set this to like 10 or something like that and we'll need a random block yeah, probably a random block for to offset the coordinates of the block. So the particles are between one and zero. And then we need to duplicate this two times. Yeah, so we'll need, we'll need that. And then what we can go ahead and do is we can just multi or offset the coordinates to like zero point five or something like that just so that it's above the block and then we can whoop, um, we can go ahead and move Z over to there Y over to here and then our X will be there and then that should give the particles a general direction I'm sure there's a few things that need to be done I need to also make sure that there is error above above the block so it doesn't just keep spawning particles upwards so Obviously, if you want to make it take out the extra time and stuff to work on something like particles, you probably want to add your own particle. I have a tutorials on how to add particles already, so uh, I might update the video though and in the future. But uh, basically, I just want to make sure that the block above is error and that the particles can spawn. So that would be my condition. All right, we can. Go ahead and save that once we select our particle. So we're going to need it to think about the particle that we're going to want. I'm going to just type in bubbles and see what come up. Uh, I'm not sure how the animation for that or will work in game because I haven't really played around with the bubble particles too much. But in game, as you can kind of see, I've messed around with the particles, all three of them, and it didn't really turn out that well. Um, they kind of flicker, uh, not really what I wanted overall, but uh, if you go ahead and build something like this, you can basically go ahead and add more liquid. And I didn't make it so it, this source multiplies, so it's very similar to lava. So if we wanted to fill in the center part, what we're going to need to do is place a block in the center and then fill it in. And then we need to basically make sure that other parts there. So once we remove that block, we need to fill that block too. But uh, if we were to hop in here, you can see that the bubbles are only happening on the surface. That would work for 
um, regular particles uh, for something that's custom. But uh, in this case, the bubbles just flicker too much. So you'd have to create your own. But it does flow and stuff. So if we were to break this, you can see that the, the fluid does flow. And uh, yeah, outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.